For much of my furniture making career, the word modern has been treated as somewhat alien to our popular furniture culture. The popular notion has been that modern furniture cannot mix with antiques in the very same century, yet nobody seems to question the incongruity of furniture made several centuries apart. So, when I first proposed Furniture Today as a series of evening classes at Bath University in the late 90s, it was met with some doubt that enough people would attend. This underground revolution in craftsmanship and design over the past 30 years or so in Britain is a story that needs telling, and that story is getting even better today. In the 1970s, a handful of trained product designers turned their backs on a rather hidebound furniture industry and set up as independent designer makers, hence giving birth to the British craft revival. And it seems remarkable to me as a designer maker over several decades how ignorant the public still is about the practical arts. Television barely scratches the surface. For instance, who can tell the difference between veneer or solid wood? Is solid wood superior to veneered? Is old wood better than new wood? And the biggest chestnut of my career was, they don't make it like they used to. Now, in order to fully appreciate furniture today, I think it's important to look at it against a historical backcloth. Tradition is a continuum, and the furniture of today is bound to be rooted in those rich and varied traditions. There are four major furniture periods which span the centuries. These periods refer mainly to the dominant timbers available. The box chair is typical of early frame and panel construction, using the mortise and tenon. The Victorian period heralded the Industrial Revolution and the age of the machine. I'm now going to look briefly at the story of furniture over the past century. The Bauhaus was a group of architects and designers led by Walter Gropius, who opened a school in Weimar in 1919. In Sweden, Bruno Matheson was using laminated structures and gearing up his designs for what was to become the most successful furniture exporting country in the world. Popularised versions of his chairs are currently sold by IKEA. Um, the, there were three main catalysts to the what has become known as the 70s British Craft Revival. Once, one was the formation of the Crafts Council. The second catalyst was a privately run gallery in the backwoods of Oxfordshire. And the third catalyst, in my opinion, was John Makepeace, who um, is here this evening. And I remember this piece at the Prescott Gallery, and I thought, my God, you know, it's car underbody filler, when everything was kind of French polish and... The thing I like about this particular piece is it's a wonderful balance between cabinetry and sculpture. That the spacing of that dovetail isn't the same. I mean, that's not a mistake in measuring out. It's because the, the front of the drawer would probably want to curl away more. I went sniffing. I was opening drawers and sniffing. And there's a very different sniff between oak and ash. And there's one exhibit there that includes both, I think. But actually, there's two side by side. John has always been a leading light in bespoke furniture making, constantly surprising but always consistent in his ability to create strikingly innovative furniture. One of the things I find, I find exciting about furniture making is the, the, the exploring the language and you know, trying to extend the boundaries of what furniture can convey. So three sides of the desk, three uh, sets of drawers, and he moved round, had three chairs, and so he changed position according to the time of day. Here is a craftsman whose work is clearly rooted in tradition and practicality, being a descendant of the arts and crafts movement, and a craftsman who has earned the worldwide respect of countless students and practitioners as someone who knows his material. It really is one of my favorite pieces, I have to say, Alan. I mean, I just yeah, delightfully... Yeah, it's been one of the most successful one. And um, the one that really, you know, I, I like to think it's mine. It's been copied quite a rather a lot. Yeah. 